Oh boy, I'm running out of ideas for a funny intro. Ooh. Hey guys, Reese here from StudyNova.com and today we're going to be talking about, as you can see in the title below, IB Economics Paper 1 and the difference between a 10 marker and a 15 marker. Now the inspiration for this video came from a comment that I got from a user on my article, How to Nail Economics Paper 1. And in that question, the user was asking what the main difference between a 10 and a 15 marker was. The main difference between any 10 or 15 marker is the way that you apply your techniques. So in IB, we know that, or at least we should know, that it's not just what you know that's important for the exam, but it's how you apply it and what kind of technique you use to answering a question. Now I've talked about a certain technique that I've used in economics quite a lot actually, and it's the D technique. That's spelled D-E-E-D, -E -E which stands for definitions, explanations, examples, and diagrams. Now it's these four components that are critical in your response to maximizing your potential points for that 10 mark question. Now when it comes to any 10 mark question in economics, paper one at least, you need to be taking a look at what the question is asking you. And to really understand the difference between 10 and 15 markers, just take a look at how the questions are phrased. You might notice that typically for a 10 mark question, you might see key phrases such as explain or analyze. Whereas in 15 mark questions, you'll see stuff like evaluate or elaborate or something like that or discuss. Discuss is also another favorite. So. When you're tackling these questions, you need to understand that there are different components needed for these responses. Luckily for you guys, you can actually apply the aforementioned deed technique to a 15 marker as well with a slight twist. So with your 10 marker, there was the deed technique, so that's D-E-E-D. -E -E but with the 15 marker, you add an extra E to the end. Now the extra E stands for evaluate. Now not only are you taking the main components from the 10 mark question and putting them into the 15 mark, you're also adding the addition of an evaluation at the end of your response. So let's put this into context. Let's say you're doing a 10 mark question and the question asks you, now I'm gonna take an example from the 2015 paper, but the question is asking you, explain how fiscal policy can be used to achieve long-term economic growth increase in potential output. So in that question alone, you can identify multiple things to define. You can define fiscal policy, you can define economic growth, and then go on in your explanation, so the explain part, to explain the theory behind fiscal policy. So you could talk about the reduction of taxes and how that affects the economy as your explanation. Now as your definitions, as I said earlier, you'd be defining fiscal policy. So you need to transition from there into an explanation and then into an example. Now as far as your examples go for your 10 mark questions, you could do something that doesn't necessarily have to be a real world event. You don't have to know any real world situations for your examples. They can be completely hypothetical. So you could say something like the government of country X has imposed a tax cut of 15% which has led to a result of XYZ on country X. So you could use that as your hypothetical example. And at the end of that, you'd also have a diagram. So for fiscal policy, you have a diagram of a reduction in taxes, and you would explain how that achieves economic growth by an increase in output, something to that effect. Now, remember, when you're using the deed technique with your 10 markers, you need to ensure that your question kind of flows smoothly. It shouldn't sound randomly copy and paste it all together. It has to flow very smoothly. Your argument has to, has to be sound and has to move on from one another. So for example, you go from fiscal policy, you define what that is, you give an example of what fiscal policy is, so reduction in taxes, and then you explain what the fiscal policy is intended to achieve, and then you put a diagram and shows Visually, this is how a tax cut would affect the economy, as you can see by these lines, by these axes, etc. So it has to flow really well. Now, moving on to the 15 mark question, the difference here, remember, is that you need to evaluate your response. So I'm going to be taking another example from the November paper in 2015, and this example is, discuss the view that economic growth always leads to a more equal distribution of income and a reduction in unemployment. So. Keyword there is discuss. That is what you need to see in order to, well, not exactly what you need to see, but that's the keyword that'll indicate to you that you need to elaborate and evaluate what you stated. Now, the question is asking if economic growth leads to an equal distribution of income and lowers unemployment. So what you need to do is define a few keywords there. You need to define economic growth 
you need to define unemployment and you need to maybe define income but the two main ones you'd need to obviously focus on defining would be economic growth and then unemployment so that's your definitions out of the way then you need to explain you know perhaps what economic growth is and how it affects unemployment let's say so you'd explain that and then give an example so you could use a hypothetical example country x country y etc just use that and then you would go to your diagrams where you would probably use fiscal policy to explain economic growth now if you were to use fiscal policy remember you need to kind of also define that now Considering that this 15 mark question came after the fiscal policy 10 mark question, you would probably need to use some kind of fiscal policy in this question to maximize your points. So at the end of it, once you've done the deed part, your evaluation is really where you kind of do the whole advantages, disadvantages, benefits, drawbacks kind of argument. And then you can, uh, you can probably take a stance. So you have to say the benefits, or in this case, it's asking you to discuss the view. So in this case when you're discussing the view you are going for and against so you're either saying yes economic growth does lead to a more equal distribution of income and lowers unemployment and then give a couple arguments for that and then you take the flip side of that argument the against argument which would start off like however or on the other hand economic growth does not always lead to an equal distribution of income and a reduction in unemployment because of xyz reasons which you have to explain really well for the conclusion at the end of your evaluation which you need to have you would have to say some you would have to take a stance you would have to say overall economic growth does or does not lead to equal distribution of income or reduction in unemployment and then you need to explain your reasonings once again so to sum everything up the main difference between a 10 and a 15 marker is really just the evaluation part. The 10 marker, you just asked to talk about the theory, you need to draw up the diagrams, you need to define the key phrases, and then you need to add the examples. What the 15 mark question does, you need to add all of that in, and then you also need to add an evaluation and then a conclusion at the end to take a stance on why you are for or against a certain viewpoint, or whether you think a certain situation has more advantages or more disadvantages and then you need to kind of argue your case there. So that's essentially the main difference between a 10 market and a 15 market question. I'll probably add a follow-up article to this just so it makes it clearer. Maybe it wasn't so clear in the video, but I hope you guys have understood the fundamental difference between a 10 and 15 marker in the economics paper one, which is essentially just the evaluation part. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys have taken away something educational from this and you've learned something new about the paper one with regards to 10 and 15 mark questions. There are more articles on studynova.com that might help clarify what I've just talked about. I'm not sure, but head over there if you want some kind of supplementary reading just to solidify what you know and what I've talked about in this video today. I'm Reese from studynova.com. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.